the common data Ponziani Armando the owner of a thriving chemical industry lives in a beautiful villa on Lake Como with his wife and his son Franco Arcilia Mrs Ponzio former secretary seduced and married the wife knowing the trends don giovanni forced him to keep as secretary amelia exemplary degenerate the fairer love and has filled the establishment of women carefully chosen for ugliness the ponzio however in spite of everything keeps in a city hotel Ingrid Swedish lover one day due to a car accident the couple Armando and Arcelia end up in plaster and Amelia disappears Dr Min Gozi chemist who aspired to lead the company Ponzio offer the girlfriend Louis as new secretary its beauty attract the desire of the owner and even the home of his son joseph the love comedies of the past do not try to find political correctness in them for the most part they did not care about that overall I have seen worse movies when it comes to depicting women and this even has a powerful one who is having her husband under her thumb which obviously is very much needed considering the escapade he tries throughout having said that the movie also reminded me of a Louis de Funès movie where the father and the son are trying to bond different story about their bonding and their work but seems it has such certain similarities when it come to the mood and the comedy that is being displayed this being a lot hotter though for better or worse funny and decent if you are not easily of 100 Amando Ponziani owner of a chemical industry lives in a villa on Lake Como with his wife Arcelia and their son Franco being aware of her husband's don juan tendencies Arcelia has forced him to have only ugly women work in her establishment but she is unaware that the man has a swedish mistress ingrid whom she maintain in a city hotel one day the two spouses are involved in a car accident in which the man's secretary mysteriously disappears dr mingozi who aspired to become director of the Ponziani firm proposes his fiancée Luisa to the man as the new secretary the woman because of her beauty soon becomes the object of the attentions of the master and his son in the end Luisa will marry Franco and will arrange for senior Arcelia to start a relationship with Oscar a friend of Franco's in such a way as to follow senior Armando to freely associate with his Ingrid commandant upon Ziani Armando owner of a flourishing chemical industry lives in a beautiful villa on Lake Como with his wife Arcelia and son Franco. 
Senor Ponziani, already a secretary, seduced and married by her husband. Knowing his Don Juan tendencies, forced him to keep Amelia, a degenerate example of the fair love as secretary, and filled his establishment with women carefully chosen for their ugliness. Ponziani, however, despite everything, keeps Ingrid, a Swedish lover, in a city hotel. One day, due to a car accident, the spouses Armando and Ursilia end up in plaster, and Amelia disappears. Dr. Mingozzi, a chemist, who aspired to run the Ponziani firm, offer his fiancée Luisa as his new secretary. Her beauty attracts the master's desire of the son and even of the servant to suffer. But the girl secured the love of Franco, who marries and bends the opposition of the future in laws by throwing the lady into the arms of the very ugly Oscar. The plot of 1976, my father's private secretary, follows the story of Alberto Martini, a middle aged man who is a prominent businessman. Alberto has a wife, Franca, and a teenage daughter, Rosie, but feels neglected and bored in his marriage. One day, a charming young woman named Angela is hired as Alberto's personal secretary. Angela is very attractive and skilled at her job. But she is also aware of her charms and easily seduces the man around her. Alberto, fascinated by Angela, begins to flirt with her and the two begin a secret relationship. However, things get complicated when Rosie Alberto's daughter suspect something and start to investigate. Meanwhile, Franca, Alberto's wife, begin to suspect her husband's infidelity and hires a private detective to follow him. The situation becomes increasingly complicated and comical when all the characters find themselves involved in misunderstandings, deception, eventually truth come to light and relationships are tested. Alberto realizes his mistake and try to make up for the damage caused to his family. My father's private secretary is a funny and sparkling comedy that tackles themes such as infidelity, the desire for freedom, and the search for happiness in a monotonous marriage. The film is based on the humor, awkward situations, and charm of the female lead played by the famous actress Edwidge Panek, who was known for her role in many Italian comedies of the 70s. The film follows the story of Alberto Martini, a successful middle-aged businessman who is married and has a son. Alberto feels trapped in a monotonous and unfulfilling marriage, yearning for excitement 
and passion in his life one day a charming and alluring young woman named angela is hired as his private secretary as angela starts working closely with alberto she quickly becomes aware of his dissatisfaction and the emotional distance within his marriage sensing an opportunity angela uses her seductive charm to capture alberto's attention and begin an illicit affair with him despite the risk involved as the secret relationship unfolded tends increasingly away of the strain and unhappiness in the household the film explore the intricate web of deceit passion and consequences as alberto try to balance his dual life torn between his family and his affair with angela the story delves into the emotional turmoil guilt and the impact of these choices on the relationship and dynamic of the martini family ultimately the truth is exposed leading to confrontation heartbreak and a moment of reckoning for all involved the characters must confront their desire face the consequences of their action and decide what truly mattered to them in the pursuit of happiness and fulfillment The film follows the story of Ponziani Armando, owner of a thriving chemical industry, who lives in a splendid villa on Lake Como with his wife Arcelia and son Franco. Ponziani is a successful man, but feels he has lost the passion and excitement in his life. One day a new private secretary is hired for ponziani it is a charming young woman named maria who proves to be very competent at her job however maria hide a secret she is ponziani's illegitimate daughter born from a past relationship as maria works closely with ponziani she begin to manipulate him and try to sabotage his family life using her charm and intelligence maria managed to insinuate herself into ponziani's life sowing discord between him and his wife Ponziani unaware of Maria's true identity falls into her trap and begin a secret relationship with her Meanwhile Arcelia begin to suspect something is wrong and try to find out the truth The situation is further complicated when Franco Ponziani's son discover the affair and rebel against his father. This leads to tension and conflict within the family, putting Ponziani's company and his marriage at risk. Eventually the truth is revealed and ponziani realizes the mistake he has made he has to deal with the consequences of his action and try to rebuild his relationship with his family my father's private secretary explore themes 
such as infidelity, family, and the destructive power of lies. It offers a dramatic story about the conflict between desire and responsibility and the search for redemption. Despite his success, Ponziani feels a sense of dissatisfaction and a lack of passion and excitement in his life. This feeling of monotony and yearning for something more becomes a central aspect of the film's narrative. The story likely delves into Ponziani's personal journey as he navigates the complexities of his desire and try to rediscover the passion he once had. It may explore how his discontentment impact his relationship with his wife and son as well as his overall sense of fulfillment. As the film unfolds, Viewers may witness Ponziani's attempt to break free from the monotony of his life and seek out new experiences or avenues that can reignite his passion. It could depict the challenges he faces, the choices he makes, and the consequences that arise from his pursuit of excitement and fulfillment. Oh, all my father's private secretary seem to delve into themes of personal fulfillment, the search for passion, and the complexities of maintaining balance within personal and family relationship. It likely offer a character-driven narrative that invite viewers to reflect on their own desire, aspiration, and the importance of finding meaning and satisfaction in life, having become famous thanks to TV. Alongside Pippo Bordo in Kanzoni Sima, Maria Rosaria Omaggio made her film debut in 1976 with no less than four films at the same time. And this comedy by Laurenti, written by his partner Francesco Melizia and produced by Luciano Martino, who personally takes it upon himself to convince Omaggio to accept Laurenti's courtship for a film in which the TV starlet will invariably have to undress. Giovanni Grazi says well from the pages of then Corriere della Sera chest in the moderate Christian Democrat TV but unglued in the cinema Many heroines of Italy of the period complete this path and Omaggio is no exception. However, the film is offered to her as a sort of classy product. Even if inserted in the low vein, high level technical and artistic cast, an amusing little story that even seems to refer to La Segretaria Preveta, Elsa Merlini's debut film from 1931, and a reduced amount of nudity that won't shame her too much. Even if Martino point out that this type of cinema is a must in the career of an actress, with some reluctance homage accept and all in all, it does well for two reasons. First of all, because her face gives freshness to a highly inflated vein, 
that sees more or less the same epidermis. Actually, the backlash of the homage in a film like this is felt and reaches the viewer with a certain clarity. The Neapolitan actress has a strange candor, a mixture of naivety and ambiguity, eroticism and refinement, which differentiate her from the antagonist of the co evil comedy. Kind of like Luisa, the secretary she plays, she appears disoriented and bewildered by all the suckers and horny Ambaradan that the various Renzo Montagnani, Enzo Carnaval, Stefano Petrezzi and Alvaro Vitelli set up to encircle her and obtain her favors. When Omajo undresses, she transmits an elegant, precious, refined sensuality rather distant from certain free-range vulgarities seen elsewhere. The Omajo is joined by Anita Strindberg and Juliana Calendra, who do not strip naked and help to keep the level of femininity present in the film more courtly. Two faces, two approaches, two star restaurant allure instead of a tavern with a fixed price menu. It has to be said that Strindberg is nearing the end of her career and she looks a little tired. She is employed as a decent version of Martina Lotta, seen at work in similar role. La Calendra play Montagnani's extremely jealous wife, rather amusing in her doctorial rigidity and still attractive as a sura of the industrial Como area. But I had written about two reasons why Omajo was right to accept the contract. The second is that my father's private secretary is an entertaining film. Net of prudence and rest in the wind. The Montagnani Laurenti pairing wins and convinces not infrequently the pungent and tight dialogue between the Tuscan actor and a particularly fit carnival make you laugh heartily. The epithets that Montagnani bestow on the Neapolitan handyman made are fulminating and full of irrepressible inventiveness. She is the object of desire of every male present in the story and yet, despite his apparent naivety and simplicity, he will be able to turn the situation in his favor completely. Beautiful location in Lombardy for rich people, Alvaro Whitley fortunately is kept in check, which helps to make it much more digestible and fun, and to avoid Kachrona drift of the film. At times the story gets tangled to the limit of fucked with character hiding in wardrobe under the bed and behind the curtain as if they were comedians. But Laurenti proves to be a captain with strong now, maintaining an almost perfect balance between the various elements that make up the film. Undoubtedly a pleasant product that makes the presence of the homage a starting point for originality 
कंपेयर टू अदर कंपिटिटिव टाइटल ऑफ द पीरियड द फिल्म डेल्स इन टू द इंट्रकसिस ऑफ फैमिली रिलेशनशिप एंड द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ इनफर्डेलिटी एंड दिस सीट ऑन इंडिविजुअल एंड द लव वंस इट रेज इज क्वेश्चन अबाउट द चॉइस इज वी मेक द कॉन्सिक्वेंस इज दैट फॉलो and the potential for growth and reconciliation by exploring the conflict between personal desire and family responsibilities the film likely delves into the moral dilemma faced by the character and the internal struggle it may depict the emotional turmoil guilt and regret that arise when one's action have far reaching effect on the family unit throughout the narrative viewers may witness the character grappling with their own desire and the consequences of their choices the story may highlight the importance of communication trust and understanding standing within a family as well as the power of forgiveness and redemption films that delves into complex family dynamic often offer a mirror to viewers on experiences and invite them to reflect on their relationship and personal growth My father's private secretary seems to provide a thought provoking exploration of these themes emphasizing the significance of love forgiveness and finding a balance between personal fulfillment and familial responsibilities Asilia Ponziani wife of commandant amando head of a well established chemical product factory and became the consort of the industrialist after having been his secretary knowing perfectly the weak point of her husband women ursilia decide to make scorched earth around the man hiring the horrid amelia as the man secretary and placing very carefully chosen workers in the man's factory based on the skewer's charm or even ugliness thus inside the splendid villa on lake como where the spouses live with their son franco everything goes smoothly until the day when the two have a car accident in which they are injured and forced to stay in bed for ponziani the situation is a problem in fact he cannot see his charming lover ingrid whom the man keeps in a city hotel but mingozi unexpectedly arrive to help a chemist who has the ambition to become a manos right hand man in managing the factory mingozi offer his splendid girlfriend luisa as secretary unleashing an uproar in the ponziani house amando in fact always very sensitive to female graces tries in every way to seduce the woman who also has other shooter namely amando's son and her servant thus while the three cockerels of the house try to ingratiate themselves with the woman luisa struggle to win franco's true love of course he succeed 
and to convince his future in-laws who are very reluctant to marry the two young men he pushes a friend of his into Ursula's arm and the beautiful Ingrid into Armando's arm who is thus hired at the villa as the new secretary my father's private secretary a 1976 film directed by Mariano Lorenti or a screenplay by Melissa is a comedy like countless other from the 70s built around the fresh beauty of Maria Rosaria Omaggio and that of Anita Strindberg it can be defined as a pleasant comedy almost totally devoid of the inevitable vulgarities that stirred the product of the genre the task of creating funny gags is entrusted to a tried and tested trio of actors and protagonists of an impressive series of clone product namely Renzo Montagnani Alvaro Vitli and Enzo Carnaval the three carry out the little task sufficiently also help by the extreme simplicity of both the plot and the rather trivial dialogue however lacking the usual vulgarity and triviality the end product of the acting is acceptable maria rosaria omaggio is also discreet beautiful and fascinating even from a physical point of view the only drawback a certain in expressiveness of the face Asilia Ponziani is played by the very good Juliana Calandra who will eventually console herself in the arms of Oscar or Alvaro Vitli who is immediately promoted to be the family's driver a pleasant little film therefore with a beautiful location set on Lake Como.